computer. Hi, Joe Cerrone. Al Rosen. Welcome to CAD 134, Basic AutoCAD for Interior Design in our weekly Zoom classroom meeting. All right, we're going to continue working on the assignments from the textbook, and essentially we're following chapter by chapter in the book. So we're going to look at our assignments that we're working on. We'll look at chapter two and chapter three lectures. And we're gonna continue working on the chapter three conference rooms. We'll complete the review questions from the end of each chapter. And as we look at the material that we're working on, we're gonna turn that into the assignments folder. So anything from chapter one will go in chapter one, including drawings. And there's only one drawing for that. The chapter one exercise looks like this right here. And if you put it in the wrong one, that's okay. Just resubmit it and put it in the right one. We're getting things straightened out. And then when we look at some of the other assignments from chapter two, chapter two is really well laid out. Whoops, got to go back to my, here we go. Chapter two is really well laid out. And so if we go to content, chapter two, Chapter two is to complete these assignments from the end of the chapter. And so we had these shapes and they're basically just how to draw things with CAD. And we have the videos for creating those exercises. When you see something that says shapes video, drawing exercises, drawing a pattern. And then as we continue down, here's how you would draw the door. Etc. All right, so that's the chapter two assignments. These drawings right here, 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 and here will be turned into the assignments folder in chapter two. And so under assignments, chapter two, that's where those materials go. And they all, everything looks good that we've been checking on so far, does it not? Yes. yes. So I think the students are getting it. We're just trying to give everybody feedback. All right, and then the chapter three assignments for this week, if we look under content, and then we look at our chapter three exercises, we're working on exercise 3-1, which we started on last week, and then complete one of the exercises from the end of the chapter like that's shown below. So if we come back here to our CAD software, this was our chapter one exercise. And then if we look at 3-1, this is what that assignment will look like. And essentially we go through and we draw this conference room with the associated dimensions that are called out within that exercise. And then if we look at the extra credit assignment, the extra credit is to do these area rugs within that. And so here's what that looks like. And then here's another example of a conference room. And you're welcome to do as many as you want. We're just setting up a baseline of assignments for you to do at this point. Let's take a look at the lectures. So if we go back to our main splash page, and I guess, let me recap one more time our assignments for chapter three here. The assignments for chapter three, here's project 3-1. And you'll go through and you'll create this conference room. And we made a video for this last week with all the sizes and dimensions. And so as I look at this assignment, I can see that the room is 16 feet, one inches by 18 feet, 10 inches. And here's my 16 feet one by 18 feet, 10 inches. And they're pretty straightforward. You know, when you get down to it, a lot of it just comes down to getting used to the interface and the software. And then we come back to our splash page. That's exercise 3-1. And then project 3-2 is an extra credit assignment. You can do this curved conference room. It's an intermediate type assignment. And as you go through, they'll give you the dimensions for that. And then 
these furniture symbols, Al and I will go through and show you how you can either insert that or on this assignment, they actually have you go through and draw the chair geometry. Alrighty. And then the questions from the end of the chapter, here's the questions from the end of chapter two. You're to complete these questions and put them in the Dropbox for chapter two. You can just put them on a piece of paper with notepad and just, you know, write or just type in your answers for those. And then chapter three questions. Again, put this in the end of chapter three. Questions like content specific, where they're asking you how to draw the outside walls with a polyline. And they do some techniques here that Al and I don't necessarily use for the outside walls because polylines create shapes. And we talked about that a little bit last week. But as you go through it, this is very predictable. And so we can just follow the chapters, work with the content that we have in there, and I think everybody will be on task. Al has included some AutoCAD shortcuts. A number of people are using the Mac software. And when you use the Mac software, the interface looks different. And you can type in any of these commands and it will run that AutoCAD command. And so it's not a bad idea, print it out, keep it by your computer when you work on it. And then you have one more resource for you as you start to pick up CAD. If you have to VPN into the school, here's the instructions for that. So if you're having some difficulty with your computer, you can VPN in. VPN is sort of a secondary uh, way to do it. We recommend you download the software, install it, and work on it. But if that's not an option, you can VPN in, or you can just come into school. The school is open, the labs are open, and they all have AutoCAD in the main computer labs. And then Al's using these B-size ARC papers for the drawings. And so as we take a look at the B-size ARC paper, if we open that, what that's going to do is it's going to open our title block and then allow us to work on that. And as we work on these drawings, we wanna get the AutoCAD fundamentals down. Things like the difference between paper space and model space. And then settings, okay, how do you set up the grid? How do you set up the limits? How do you set up the layers? The fundamentals are what we're pushing at this point right now. Okay, so let's take a look at the lectures and then so as we look at the lectures, here's our chapter two. Let's increase that a little bit. Basic settings and commands. And so here's our learning objectives, being able to begin a new drawing, setting units, limits, grid, and snap. So when we're looking at that and we start a new drawing, what we're doing is we're setting up the drafting settings making layers and assigning colors, line types, and line weights to each layer. We'll look at the layer manager for that. And then function keys for grid and snap, save as, saving, grips, ortho. We're not gonna use annotation scale. It's a little more than we want in a beginning level class. We'll look at how to be able to print things. And then as we go through and we pick up these different commands, we'll pick up a different command every week. And so we'll use selection sets, and then we'll use some of this coordinate information. And as you look at it, you're like, oh man, look at all these textbook words. It is vocabulary and it's a drawing class. So we tend to make videos because it's, a, it's, it's the kind of thing that you can look at and understand versus reading it and then having to interpret how to create a drawing from it. So as we look at beginning new drawings, you can just use the new command. We can use templates. So you can either use the template that you can download from L. And so this is our drawing template that we're using. It basically is a title block with a viewport in it. When we save the drawings, you save them as a drawing file, save them with your initials. And then, you know, as we look at opening and saving, again, just more formatting, okay? DWT means drawing template. 
when you open a DWT file, it basically is a blank template that allows you to save it as whatever name you want. DWS is the standards files. We're not really doing anything with that. DXF, same thing. We're not doing a lot of drawing exchange formats. It's just vocabulary. Units are important. We are working with architectural units. And so when you open the template, it's set for arc units. And that means that we draw things in feet and inches. And so here's my drawing. If I come here to model space and I look at my drafting settings, I have my snap and my grid. I usually like to dial my snap down to six inches and leave my grid at 12. I like to enable polar tracking because I'll get that green line. And then object snap, depending on whether I need it, I toggle this on and off. And so I'll okay that. And then if I look at my units, when we're working with drawings of this nature, we're gonna be always set for architectural units. So when I go and I create a line, you'll notice that it's snapping two snaps to every grid. Every grid is one foot. So you can almost eyeball it. You know, you can measure it with your eye. Okay, that's 10 feet. This is 20 feet. So if I say 20 foot mark, then we can go and make that line 20 feet. I can turn on the line weight and hit escape to put that onto a proper layer. Wall layer, there we go. And so that's kind of how we're starting to work with this. As we look at the drawings, what we're looking at is being able to create these different conference rooms. So if I'm creating this conference room and I need a wall line that's 16 feet, one inches, I can start and I'll just go and go onto the wall layer and I'll override the color with, let's say with this red. And I can start with the line command. Let's turn on our grid. And so if I were to create the geometry right next to it, I would draw a line 16 feet, one inch. And so I'd say line from this point, I'll have to turn on my grid and my snap. And this is just set really fine. What's gonna happen, I have to set it up at one inch because it's at 16 feet, one inch, which is kind of crazy. I, I'm not a big fan of when they do this instead of being in increments of six inches, which is typical what interior design people will do. So we can come to a point, I can get that, and then I can say 16 feet, one inch, and, and then that will be that 16 foot, one inch line. Turn on my line weight so I can see it, there we go. And then I'll drive that up and I will drive that 18 feet, 10 inches. And so as I, as I look at this, you see that green line, that's my polar tracking that allows me to just point it in the right direction and then type in my values, 16 feet, 10. You don't need the inch component on that to make that work. And since it's 18 feet, I'm gonna hit U for undo. And then I'll type it in the right value, 18 feet, 10 inches, one, eight feet, 10. And then we can come back this way. And again, 16 feet. And then see for close. So as we go through and we create these different geometries, we just want to emphasize the basics for that. So when we work with the drawing scales and the drawing scale factors, what we're really doing on the drawings here is we're setting our viewport scale. So when we go to paper space by clicking on this tab, double clicking in the viewport allows us to see the drawing. Think of it as like a camera to the model space. And then what we do is we dial in the viewport scale. And so we can dial that in. I'll make it a little too small, quarter inch equals a foot. And then I'll bump that up, an eighth inch equals a foot to a quarter of an inch equals a foot. And we do this so that people can print the drawings and then measure them with a ruler on paper. And so by setting up the viewport scale and then locking it, we lock in that viewport scale. And the viewport scale should be noted down here in the title block.
We use this coordinate system for the x and y axes. We've talked about our grid and our snap and zooming all. And we've also talked about our drafting settings. Again, fundamentals. And then as we look at the layers, we want to put different things on different layers. We want the wall lines to be on the wall layer, the dimension lines to be on the dimension light layers, because that's the formatting that we'll use to follow this. And as you can see, here's the, the walls, here's the plumbing, here's the electrical, and here's the furniture. By separating the layers, we can separate the jobs as well. And then when we go into the layer properties manager, what we're looking at is what the layer name is, whether it's on or frozen, whether it's locked, color, line type, line types will be continuous or hidden, line weights, and we're setting those up according to the standards in the book. And then there's just a few other things that we can kind of go into. Those are set up for you on the title block. And so as we go through, that's the plan. We'll continue to work with those things. So as we go through, they talk a little bit about absolute coordinates, relative coordinates. Best way is to just use polar. You turn on the polar button, you get the green tracking line, and then all you do is tell it how long it needs to be. You don't have to do this at one inch angle zero, at one inch angle 270. That's how it used to be back when all the engineers were doing CAD. Dynamic input, we'll continue to work with that. It basically just means that the cursor prompt follows the mouse. And then LT scale, we'll, we'll work on this as we go through. What you find is that the grid or the line dash spacing needs to be adjusted depending on the viewport scales. All right, so that's the chapter two. Chapter three goes into more additional commands. And so we'll go into more modify commands like break, chamfer, and copy. And we'll also look at these other commands as well. Again, we're using drawing templates. Polylines is how they have you go through and create it. We're not a huge fan of it because when you offset them, it offsets it as an entire geometry. So they wind up offsetting it and then exploding it, which is, well, what's the point? They're just teaching fundamentals. And then IDing points basically gives you an idea of the values. And so some of the things that we do with interior design work is calculate out areas and things like that. So what's the area of this room? I can ID these points under utilities ID point, and I can get the X, Y, and Z location of that. If I click on it and click on these grips, I can hover over them and get the measurements. And I can also use different commands like area, where I can go through and I can calculate out the area of the room based on its size. And so if I go and select area and then click on all the corners and then hit enter, it'll tell me that this has 302 square feet. And this is great when you start to estimate things like tile or carpet or wood flooring, which is priced out on a square foot basis. So again, another reason to use CAD for these type of assignments. And then we just go through some of these modify commands like trim, rectangle, chamfer, fillet, copy, rotate divide, measure. And these are in the videos from last week. So we're not going to go too far into that in our meeting at this point. Hatching, arraying, et cetera. Here's our distance command and polygraph commands. Back to the main splash page. So that's the chapter two and chapter three. You should read through your chapter two and chapter three. And then here's our projects. Project three, one. And then extra credit project three, two. And then put the assignments at the end of each of the chapters. Al, do you want to talk a little bit about Design Center? Yes. Uh, Design Center, we have together a, uh, a large, we should say, um, drawings areas 
for uh, putting in your drawings, just as you know, electronics, uh, plants, uh, furniture, cabinetry making, everything to go along with it. And what Joe is doing right now, he clicked on where it says zip, because it's a zip file and you have to unzip it onto your thumb drive or your hard drive. And as he says, open on it. So I'm gonna save this to my desktop. It's called Design Center. I'll save it. And then I'll open it. Yep. Hopefully it works. Everything's a little slower in this environment. You have to unzip it. So we'll extract it. And at this time, that's a point where you want to put it on thumb drive or hard drive or a file folder or external hard drive, whatever the case be. And I'm going to pause the recording while this unzips because it looks like it might take a couple of minutes. Resuming. So as we look at Design Center, uh, we're looking at a lot of different content that's available. If I just go through and I open this with my computer and I look at the appliances, Al has things like dishwashers. And then if we wanted to use these, we can use them in a drawing. So for example, I'm gonna move this off over here and then I'm gonna bring my conference rooms back over here. And if I wanna use Design Center, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in DC for Design Center. It's under the Insert tab but I just like to use the alias. And so here's my design center, kind of floats to the side. And then if I wanna navigate where that information is, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and collapse these. And then I'll go to this PC, I'll go to my hard drive. This is the hardest part is finding everything. And then I'll go to my CAD 134 masterclass. And then I'll go to my Design Center 1 and double click that, double click that. And then here's where all that content is. And so if I want to put in appliances, I can double click appliances. And if I want to put in a refrigerator, here are refrigerators. I can just grab it and drag it into the current drawing. So I can place a refrigerator there. It goes into the scaling app option. Just hit enter twice and then three times, and it'll give you that refrigerator content. If I want to go and grab some chairs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up into the Design Center, and then I'm going to go and find chairs. So we'll go into furniture, and then we'll go into chairs. And then we have a whole bunch of different options for the different types of chairs. So why don't we take an executive chair and bring it in for conference room, and then I can go and place that. Again, it goes through the scaling. So I'm going to just hit Enter for the defaults for that. And then if I want to add more chairs, I can go and add more chairs. So if I want to put a lounge chair in the corner, I'm going to grab that drag it in. That looks like the same one. Let's go and grab some of the other ones. chair. And so a lot of the battle when you start working with this is being able to work with the content. And so what Al has done is that he's provided you with that content on the main splash page. And the really nice thing about it is that it's not just 2D, it's 3D. So if we go and we change the metric view, you can see that it starts to form some of the bases we're going with this. And you can change that to a conceptual visual style. And then we're starting to pick up on some, some real value as far as what we can do with the course. You can also drop them in in 3D also. So if you went to 3D and drop it in, it goes right in there. All right. So let's go back to the main splash page. And then we'll, as you can see, we're still downloading this. That's why we paused the video and we went to open a different location. So I'm just going to cancel that. And then uh, Design Center toolbar seems like a high for me. All right. So this week's Zoom meeting, continue working on Chapter 3, working on these conference rooms, finish Project 3-1, and then pick one project to complete. So you ideally, you want two conference rooms in the Chapter 3 folder. With that, Al, is there anything else that we want to talk about that I might need to cover here? No, I think that's it. I think we have everything that they need to know. I guess the bonus content would be a little bit. So Al has some of these bonus commands. And so some of the bonus content, these extra credits are to do these uh, area ones or to do these other drawings. And so. Um, They're under the picture. Uh, very good. All right. Well, with that, I'm going to end the Zoom meeting or stop the recording and open things up questions. This completes our weekly Zoom meeting.